Hi everyone. Um, today I thought I'd do a video on one of the most common questions that I get asked or I see come up on various kind of Facebook forums, that kind of thing. It's one of those that um, bothers a lot of people about rats um, and it's something that can make the difference between sometimes really enjoying them and sometimes finding it quite frustrating. So what to do when your rats smell? and you kind of it's, it's bothering you and you don't know what to do um a lot of people get in this kind of state and whilst they're absolutely lovely little thing when they put their mind to it they can really make a, a bit of a smell so the first thing to understand in this is why rats make the smell um it's perfectly natural for any animal to have a certain amount of smell with it um it's much like us if if we were dogs or cats or rats and um, we probably find humans quite smelly in their own right because it doesn't smell familiar to us therefore our nose picks it up um, you do get used to and adapt it to it um, but you often can still smell it and some people with particularly sensitive noses can smell it more than others um, so rats in particular uh, probably the main problem that can cause smell to build up is obviously urine droppings um, but then also scent marking so rats use scent mark it's quite important to them um, it's how they know where is safe to live, it's how they feel comfortable, how they establish kind of a group smell so they'll know other rats because they smell familiar and they'll kind of get a bit of fam the kind of the urine um, scent marking lays over each other and they all kind of smell very similar um, so they recognise friend from foe. Interestingly they also use it to recognise when somebody's ill so if a rat's unwell and it's kind of been around food in the wild they use that actually to put them off um, eating it because they can smell the urine that that rat's ill and they think the food's to blame which is one of the ways rats are so successful so scent marking is vital to them um, in, in many ways not just the ways that I've talked about so they will naturally do it all the way around the cage and they'll also do it around the floors and work surfaces on you <laughs> it's very much part of them making their environment feel safe and comfortable so we need to when we're trying to tackle um, our human noses <laughs> We need to be respectful that the rats do need a certain amount of smell to feel happy, much like we need a certain amount of no lack of smell to be happy as well. So there is a happy medium. Um, just don't expect whatever you do for rats to smell kind of beautiful and clean. Um, well, they do smell beautiful and clean. I think they um, smell quite nice of their natural body smell. But a strong smell of urine or faeces or... Um, Kind of a really musky smell that can be over the top and that that is generally to be honest it's generally urine that causes the problem um so what to do if your rats are smelling so there's a few factors that influence um smell so first one is um cage so environment and um, this is a fairly obvious one but it really does matter so one of the first things that you need to think about when trying to make sure that your rats smell as, as little as possible for you but comfortably for them is um, substrate so substrate is what you use to cover the floor so, and kind of often surfaces as well there are a lot of different options for this and um, some of them are better than others one of the most common problem kind of substrates use and I, don't, I shouldn't really call it a substrate because substrate describes a little loose but one of the most common problem floor coverings used is fleece all the kind of fabrics they really lack absorbency um, and it's actually the same if you use some people use newspaper or even shredded paper can be pretty poor for this as well all of them don't really absorb things so in order for a substrate to do its job it has to kind of suck in and absorb any of the urine that's dropped um, aside from the fact fleece also doesn't offer them dig digging opportunities it's it's kind of it just it's naturally designed to wick away fluid to underneath and then it just sits <laughs> and smells um, Paper's very similar, it doesn't absorb very much, it's not meant to absorb very much. Um, again, it just kind of holds it and, and lets the kind of smell in the atmosphere. And it's actually not good for the rats either um, to have a strong urinary smell around. Um, they want to be kind of healthy and clean and it can irritate respiratory tracts. So you need to pick an absorbent substrate. There's a few kind of commonly used really good options. Um, chopped card isn't bad, it's fairly absorbent, some more absorbent than other, depending on how it's cut and how thick the pieces are and so on. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with um, shavings, in fact, handful straight up the cage now, so there's a bit of hay in there too. But mostly it's um, bed mats and little mats in there, 
Um, I use hay for enrichment. It's crap as a substrate on its own, but very good for fun for them. So shavings are great. They're quite absorbent. They'll suck in the urine and lock it away. You've also got substrates like hemp. Obios is probably the best known one. That is very absorbent, probably more so than shavings. Gets everywhere, but it's very absorbent, so very useful when dealing with smell. Um, you can also get cat litters, so have a dig around as well, because I have some of this. So what you want to make sure with cat litters is it's safe cat litter, and that basically means um, paper cat litter. The clay stuff and the sawdust stuff and wood stuff is, is no good for rats, nor is the pearl stuff. It's just, they're just not safe for them. So some sort of paper litter is very absorbent. It's also quite expensive. So using it over whole, all your cage is not that good. And actually, whilst they can dig in it, it's not quite the same. I prefer like a more, more kind of varied texture substrate like the shavings, but I do use it in the litter tray. So they're the high use areas. And that is actually one of the tips as well. Um, if you've got problems with your rat smelling, try thinking about litter training them. And litter training, in my experience, is as simple as making it easy for them and they will litter train themselves. I don't kind of do a proper job, but we'll go on to that later. So first of all, make sure you've got an absorbent substrate. So shavings, hemp, um, possibly chopped card, maybe mixed with something else. They're probably the main ones with potentially a litter of something like paper cat litter and um, back to nature paper lit, uh, breeder select, that kind of thing are really good. So we've got something nice absorbent. Um, next, we need to make sure we give them a decent amount of space. So what some people find is they've got a very small base cage that's very tall. They actually have very little substrate per rat. So thinking about making sure that you've got a decent amount of floor covered with the substrate will also help with your absorption. And actually, um, one of the key ones on the cage as well is shelves. So a lot of people have these lovely um, flat plastic shelves around the cages um, seem a good idea. Some people cover them with fleece, again, <laughs> doesn't really do much. But the problem with flat surfaces in a cage is the rats will mark them and they'll do that to make themselves feel safe. It's a perfectly natural thing for them to do. But because of the way the plastic works, or even when it's covered with fleece, the, the urine will just sit there and dry and it'll get stinky. Uh, one of the biggest things after you've sorted the substrate you can do to improve the smell of your cage. Uh, sorry, the girl's pushing things off stuff again. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things you can do is to get rid of the shelves and actually you can replace them. Um, I don't like a lot of shelves in my lay layouts anyway because I like to give them plenty of things to do. But what I do have is usually a few different litter tray options and I make sure that they're at different levels. And this is actually a key part of litter training. Um, you need to make sure that it's really, really easy. So one thing I've done is just, just up here, in fact I'll just move you a little bit. So up here, this shelf up here is actually a litter tray. So that's full of kind of your, your cat litter, probably a few poo poos too, but they're nicely dried out now that it's doing their job. Um, so that's one of the litter trays. That's right up near the top, near where they like to sleep. I've got um, a bit of litter in here. So this is a lower down one. Um, I've got, actually, I'm perfectly happy for them to just go to the toilet in their substrate because it's nice and absorbent. There is actually a couple of pots further up, only small things that have got um, litter in as well. So I'm giving them plenty of options and they're kind of all over the place. So basically, no matter where they are, they don't have to go far to pee. And actually there's very few other flat surfaces that they can go to the toilet on. The only one that is a bit of a pain is the top of my digging box. But actually because there's enough nearby, they don't bother peeing on that much at all. So it's not bad. Um, I give it a wipe down occasionally. But I don't want to, so this is um, another really good point, you don't want to clean out too often. So one of the classic mistakes when, it ta when you're talking about smell, smelly rats is I'm cleaning my rats out every two days or every day or twice a week or something and they still smell. I can't keep cleaning out and actually you shouldn't. The more often you clean out in some cases, if you go too far, you'll find that the rats get quite stressed. Suddenly their cage doesn't smell like them anymore and they start peeing everywhere. Um, Quite a natural response if you're a rat, a bit kind of weird to us as humans, which basically means they end up smelling more because you've cleaned them out more often. So I wouldn't advise anybody cleaning out rats more than every week. You can, let's say there's been like a really smelly poo somewhere, <laughs> give it a wipe up, but I wouldn't be going around wiping all the surfaces because you're just asking them to pee some more. Um, and the same goes if you're bathing them regularly. Again, that is more likely to make them pay, pee more um, because again, they want to smell like themselves. Aside from the fact bathing is very um, stressful and unpleasant for rats and should actually be saved only for when they've kind of got something on them that's dangerous to them. 
um, it's just it's just going to make them smell more. And and that's from experience when I used to do this, um, and a lot of people have found that. And also from kind of rat psychology, um, it does really matter to them what they smell like if they're going to be feel safe in themselves. So decent substrate, litter trays rather than shelves. Get rid of the flat plastic surfaces. Um, some people would say, looking at my cage, they have loads of wood in there. Oh, don't put wood in there. Actually, I don't find the wood too bad. Um, smell does build up after a while because it's quite absorbent, but you just stick it outside in the sun and rain for a bit and that removes all the smell. Give it a good clean, put it back in, it's fine. Um, because it's absorbent, it's taken that urine away and locked it away. And the actual act of just weather um, gets rid of that smell completely and it's kind of fresh, fresh and new. It's quite surprising how effective that is actually. Um, so actually, wood is fine, you just make sure that you cycle it so that it's not in the cage for too long. Um, mine probably stays in there for, I don't know, probably about three to six weeks, depending on how hev heavy use area it is. As soon as I smell something on it, I stick it outside for a week and then it can come back in the cage next time I clean out. Um, I should probably add, it, with this cage, because I have a cage that probably fit, I don't know, 14, 16 rats quite comfortably in it. I've got seven girls in it. It's an underpopulated cage. This does ah, not the ears. This does make a big difference. Um, and I only need to clean this out about every three weeks. Um, and there's like no smell at all. And it's not just me. I'm quite used to rats. You'd think I've got a bit of nose blind. But my husband is not <laughs> as keen on the rats and he hasn't been living with them for a long time and he can smell if it gets bad. So it's um you don't have to clean out a lot to have a cage that doesn't smell low population density and well set out really helps that. So we've talked about environment, which includes your substrate, which includes your litter trays, um, which includes kind of what surfaces you've got in the cage. Um, I should probably add to that, if they've got a favourite hammock, have a litter tray underneath it. They may roll out into the litter tray or even just stick the bum over the edge and pee, um, but it does help. Oh, one thing I should add actually, cage bars. Cage bars can really kind of accumulate the smell. So every now and again, try and give like give it a really good clean and wipe the bars down. I found these kind of uncoated bars worse for smell, particularly the ones that are kind of a square mesh. Um, so I, I much prefer this kind of bar, which is the kind of either lengthways or vertical, but painted, well combed it. Um, it seems to cope a little bit better. I don't need to wipe my bars down very often, but it's something that I'll occasionally do. Um, you can increase the rust on them if you do it too often, and rusty bars really do stink. They absorb the urine and hold it for a long time. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else environmental. Probably not that I can think of right now. Um, diet is a key thing though. What you'll find is particularly diets that are high in, higher in protein than a rat needs. And um, it's quite classic, actually, if you've got um, baby rats. Baby rats stink. Um, as a breeder, <laughs> I know this very well. And because you feed them such high protein food, because they need it because they're growing, um, their poo's really weak. And they seem to be able to produce poo like nuts. Um, it's all over the place. It's generally a bit squishy at times. Um, but yes, that, that is a classic thing. If you feed them... Yeah, somebody else has pushed something off. And now if the camera goes shaky, Mog is climbing up the um, camera stand, so I may have to intervene shortly. No, you don't. Um, don't you love rats? <laughs> so, diet. Um, so if you're feeding them extra high protein food, you'll find that once they get to the age where they don't need it very much anymore, their smell will improve considerably. But you should also think about what kind of dry mix you're feeding. Um, somewhere they've got kind of fairly poor quality proteins, and um, particularly the pets at home nuggets, which about uh, and the Burgess nuggets are the same thing. They're about the only food I would not touch with a bash pole. Um, rats do stink on those as well, which is another reason not to feed them apart from their health. Um, but they do get quite whiffy on that and actually some of the other things that are kind of you're talking 16 percent protein over 14 percent can get quite smelly on that and if, if it's kind of cheap proteins it doesn't seem to help so do look to the diet and um, if you're feeding them a lot of extras um, even feeding a bit of veg i mean veg is beneficial I, I do think you should feed it regularly but you may find afterwards that they um, do stink a little bit and um, broccoli farts are a thing in rats um, it's quite amusing so bear with them on that don't overfeed them veg um, you can feed a rat too much. Not every rat has the same amount that's too much, but it's, it's one to consider if you're noticing that it's getting a bit smelly at that time. Um, the other thing is actually kind of more behavioural. So 
environmental is one of the things you can really control diet is something you can definitely control but behavior is a little bit more tricky so if you've got a lot of kind of dominant stuff going on in the cage they're trying to work out who's boss you'll find that it will smell a bit more and that's because everybody's sent marking like crazy to try and work out who, who's going to be the strongest in there and actually the behavioral thing also comes into kind of the litter tracing some rats are just lazy and you can improve that by trying to encourage like an active layout i always do active layouts anyway um but by trying to get them used to climbing around moving around they'll be more kind of tempted to get out of that hammock and go and pee in the litter tray rather than just marinate themselves, which is sadly a thing in rats. Um, changing your hammocks fairly regularly um, helps with, with marinating, but again, you don't want to change them too often, otherwise they'll just pee some more. So around about um, weekly up to monthly, it depends on your rats and their use. Um, use your nose. If it starts really stinking, swap it out. What I actually find um, with that actually bedding can really influence it. So if you're giving them lots of kind of tissuey bedding, what they sometimes quite like to do is build a nest in the hammock, which is great, good for them, great fun. Um, once they pee on it, it stinks. So grab a handful of that out, throw it away, but leave the hammock in and actually that will keep a bit of the scent, but not too much. And it's generally a bit more bearable for us. And they feel less inclined to go and wee everywhere because there is a bit of a scent of them. So how do you encourage litter, litter training? Um, I say I don't do anything, I just set the cage right and that is really the key. Um, what you can do if you're really bothered by it is you can start, like if you find a poo in the wrong place, move it to the place you want it to do, go. Um, if you see a rat starting to pee, move it into there. I find that they learn better from each other though. So a really good way to litter train is get some rats that are comfortably litter trained, um, which, will really depend um, if you're lucky enough to find some. Uh, mine basically litter train themselves, the mums are litter trained, so well, when I say litter train, they choose to use the litter tray rather than peeing in their hammocks and by choice. Um, I have never really trained them to do it and in turn they kind of train the babies to do it and so on and you'll find that some lines are like that. Um, it's quite a nice thing. But you can try and train yourse them yourselves. Um, I don't have the patience, but to be honest I don't need to either. Um, I don't think I've actually had a problem with a rat heavily pooing. You get the odd poo in the hammock, um, but I haven't really had a problem with that. One thing I do think helps if you're going to do like really irregular, well, not irregular, really kind of long between change outs like me. So going for your like three, four weeks type thing, looking for kind of hot spots. So there's going to be areas that get quite pee filled. I've got a house down on the floor underneath the shelf, which they quite like sleeping in and that can get a little bit smelly so I just again I'll take a couple of handfuls of the dirty bedding out and put a couple of handfuls of new stuff in but by kind of retaining enough of the old smell they don't feel the need to really pee like mad and it just kind of works quite well. Litter trays are all also heavy use areas so you can always spot clean around there and um, if my litter tray gets full I will change it before I do the rest of the cage if needs be and that works quite well. Um, but I'd say those are probably the main things. So environment, make sure you've got an absorbent substrate, you've got a decent litter if you're going to use it, not lots of flat trays and use litter trays around the cage. It doesn't have to be filled with litter by the way, you can fill litter trays with your decent substrate as well. Um, don't bath the rats, don't over clean <laughs> and um, make sure the diet's good um, and an appropriate level of protein. I would not not feed babies protein just because they smell because they need that protein um, but just make it appropriate for their needs at the time and it'll work out. So if they're still causing you problems, if you still think they're smelly and you've done all that then there's a few things that you can do to um, kind of improve the smell in your environment. So you can get um, odour neutralisers like, like Nutridol and there are probably other brands that's just one I'm familiar with. Um, put them well out of reach of the rats because you do not want them eating them but they're not a bad thing to kind of absorb a bit of the odour from the air. You also can get things like um, fresh air globes. I've used those in the past. They're not bad. They kind of circulate the water and pull kind of dust and such out of the water. They do work quite quite well. Um, you have to be a little bit careful with essential oils because some of them can irritate the rat's respiratory tract. But um, there's things like tap a drop, um, which you probably find if you Google it, which are kind of quite safe smells um, that you can put around and kind of natural smells aren't too bad. But remember, you're just masking the problem in that case, but it can work. Um, also be a bit careful with scented candles and that kind of thing. Again, some of them can irritate respiratory tracts. You've always got to look after the rats. But, sorry, somebody else.
chocobo is now, cli now climbing up the frame. Um, yeah, so you, you always need to think about the rats, and some rats are more sensitive than others. Um, to be honest, I probably get away with quite a lot with my locks. I don't see much in the way, ah, not licking the ear, uh, much in the way of respiratory problems. But if I had rescues, I would be a lot more paranoid about what I used um, with them because it does really um, matter for them. So that that is an option. Um, make sure your humidity is okay, so you don't want it too high, too low. That can actually help with the smell as well. And if you've got an old rat that's really struggling to clean itself, it's okay to kind of wipe them around the bits a little bit as well. It's a, kind of not their problem, but they're probably probably going to need more intense cleaning out, like if they're in a single level cage, just because they can't kind of move around and circulate things in the same way. And um, I should probably say that actually. Do not have a rat, rats in a cage with um, a mesh floor and then substrate underneath it so the poo drops down. People think this is a great idea, but all it does is basically mean that the urine sits on top of the bars, apart from the fact it's not comfortable for the rats to walk on, um, and it doesn't get circulated when it drops down. So actually it doesn't... This is now the new favourite game because I have to pick them up off it. Um, yeah, so it doesn't get circulated. So the actual rats, act of the rats walking through the substrate circulates it, which helps kind of move the wet stuff to the bottom and the fresh stuff to the top, which is great because it locks it away even better. Um, so you don't want to take the rats away from the litter or away from the substrate because it's just not effective. Um, mesh shells are also an absolute nightmare. They're worse than plastic ones for holding the shell because of the shell, um, smell because they've got lots of little kind of gaps in between the bars. So avoid those too. So I think that's most of it. Um, probably covered everything that I can think of for now on terms of reducing the smell. It sh will make a big difference if you do all those things um, and if you take into account what the rats actually need from the smell as well. Um, you'll probably find things improve a lot. I would say it's also worth, if you're not sure, posting pictures of your cage set up on places like Facebook group Rat Care UK, which I use quite a bit. You can even post it, post pictures um, on my Facebook page and I'm quite happy to have a look at them. But there are other good people that know the stuff as well out there and um, that can help you with it. Um, sorry, Mog is now trying to, this is her tail, thinking about jumping onto the um, camera. Right, so have a think of that, have a go, see how it works, um, try and hold your nerve with the cage cleaning thing. I know it's really hard when it seems contrary to every notion of trying to keep things clean, is to leave it a bit longer. And definitely start with the substrate, start with the cage setup and see how things go from there. But good luck and I hope your cage is nice and pleasant environment for you very soon. And um, see you in the next video.